Plan books for my wood models are available at Amazon. The links are in the description. The plans for today's project are also available at Amazon, in both an Imperial Units and a Metric Units edition. This is my new wooden wheel tire tread jig for wood models or wood toys. If you're a subscriber to my channel, you may remember that a couple years ago I made a previous version of this jig, but there were some inaccuracies and some problems with it, so I decided to redesign it, and I'm finally ready to share it. The entire mechanism adjusts up and down so that you can do wood wheels from about an inch to an inch and a quarter all the way up to eight inches in diameter, depending on the saw blade that you're using. The entire mechanism also will rotate 90 degrees in each direction so that you can adjust the slant of the tread grooves to whatever you want for the type of tire that you're designing. The tread spacing is governed by an index wheel. The Imperial Units Edition uses a 72 tooth or 5 degree index wheel and the metric version uses a 60 tooth or a 6 degree index wheel. Unlike my last version, which used gears to transfer the rotation from the index wheel down to the threaded rod, this one uses a tensioned chain, which prevents any backlash and is much more accurate. The index wheel rotation is locked securely into position by a pin that sits tightly into the sprocket grooves. This jig was designed to work with the Jim Burns table saw, available at BurnsModelMachines.com. Now, if you happen to be building this jig for a different saw, the only modifications you'll have to make are to the base plate, because the entire jig slides back and forward on the saw table. The rest of the jig stays exactly the same. Before fixing any wooden wheels onto the threaded rod, I always detach and disengage the pin mechanism, because when I tighten that threaded rod, the nuts, with a wrench, I don't want to put any pressure on that sprocket. To demonstrate, I'll be making this four and three quarter inch diameter wheel that consists of four wooden discs, which I've already prepared here. I'll start by making one of the outer discs that has the slanted grooves in it. Now, before I do that, I wanna calibrate this and put the wooden wheel onto the threaded rod, and I wanna make sure that that wooden disc is centered over the saw blade. Now, you can see here from this enlargement that it is a little bit off. And so I have to adjust the position of the nuts and bolts on the threaded rod just so I can center that wood disc securely over the saw blade. I next set the angle of the tread grooves and I've decided on this wheel that I want to use a 20 degree angle for the slant of those grooves. Each marking on the wheel is five degrees. So I'll set that to 20. Next thing I'll do is I'll just put a small piece of cereal box cardboard down and I will lower the jig down so that wood disc rests right on the cardboard and then I'll pull the cardboard out just to make sure that that wheel is down very close to the saw blade. Fine tuning the groove depth is done by adjusting the height of the saw blade itself. I am using 15 degree groove spacing on this wheel. And on my jig, the green dots are every 10 degrees, the white dots are every 15, and the red dots are every 20, because those are the ones that I use the most. And this way I can just align it with the dots and not actually have to count. As I mentioned before, I always disengage the pin mechanism just to avoid putting pressure on the sprocket, and then I can take the wheel off. Now 
Now I will still need to do some sanding on this, but that is some nice and accurate groove spacing. The real test, however, will come when I do the second one to see if it matches the first. To do the other outer wheel segment, I rotate the jig 20 degrees in the other direction. And then it's basically the same steps as you saw before. And when you're rotating the index wheel, you can actually be a little off and the pin will actually snap the sprocket right into the exact position. And this is a dead on accurate match. I love it. Doing the center two wheel segments is easier because those are just straight grooves. So I can reset the entire mechanism back to zero degrees and then I can actually do both of those interior ones at the same time. You can see here how using the wrench actually forces that entire mechanism to turn. And that's why I disengage the pin every time, just to prevent that pressure from going onto the sprocket. I still need to do a bunch of sanding and rounding on these tread grooves to make it look a bit more worn, but man, that sure looks pretty good to me. This small wheel that I built is only an inch and a half in diameter, and it has much steeper tread grooves than the big one. But just so you can see what's possible, and you can see even on that center section, I used a full 90 degree just to make a groove all the way around the circumference. To make those circumference grooves, you just turn your machine all the way to 90 degrees in either direction here, and then you use the bolts and nuts on the threaded rod to adjust the horizontal position of the wood disc. The thickness of those grooves, of course, is dictated by whatever saw blade you're using. But with a variety of saw blades and a variety of angles, you can achieve some truly marvelous things. Well, that's the jig. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, there are links to everything, including the hardware that I use, down in the video description. Thanks for watching.